good morning and welcome to Pershaw College. Today we're going to be doing a follow-on video um, from the climbing video where you saw my colleague Ben ascend the tree. Today we're going to be doing an aerial rescue. I'm going to find myself in a predicament in the tree behind me. My colleague Ben's going to ascend the tree and rescue me. He's got some kit on the floor just behind us where we're going to discuss where there's going to be a couple of extra things we need to take with us in the event of a rescue. So laid out in the floor in front of me, we've got Ben's climbing equipment. It's all very standard. He's got his harness, his work positioning lanyard, and both of his climbing systems. His, pr his primary system is working off a zigzag, and then his backup system is going to be working off a prusik. But when he comes up the tree or sends the tree to rescue me, he's going to make sure that he takes some extra bits of equipment with him. And that's going to be an extra couple of, ca couple of uh, prusiks and a couple of carabiners. They're going to be used to attach myself, the casualty, to the rescuer's harness and system. We're going to give an example of both a damaged rope rescue and an undamaged rope rescue, both working off the DRT system or the MRT system. Okay, so if there was an incident to occur in the workplace uh, involving the climber and we had to carry out a rescue, first and foremost, we'd, we'd quiet the site, stop all work from, from going on. We don't want any excess noise. We want to be able to communicate clearly and assess the situation that we've got. We don't want to put a rescue climber in danger. So we have to assess what's going on, see what's happened, alert anybody that needs to be alerted, i.e. ambulances. Um, people have different job roles on the site and you'll have a designated aerial rescuer and again anything that's working at height has to be planned so whilst assessing what's going on and doing a rolling risk assessment we're going to plan our route how we're going to go about our rescue the equipment we're likely to need so we're just going to grab what we can out the rescue kit we're going to take extra carabiners extra strops maybe prusik loops anything that's going to aid us in the rescue of the uh, casualty Okay, so I've now climbed above our casualty Andy, who's down there. Um, I haven't had to go up as high as his anchor points. However, I do need to go high enough to be able to efficiently perform an aerial rescue. So I've chosen this point. It's going to allow me to get out and use the branch above him as a natural redirect. That's going to allow me to come in directly above Andy, get level with him and reduce any risk of pendulum um, and injuring the casualty further or, or even myself. So I can see where Andy is, the casualty. I've planned my route. I'm going to go out along this higher limb and use that as a, a natural redirect. So we'll carry on and do that. So in a controlled manner, we're going to descend through the canopy towards the casualty. I'm trying to avoid his lines not to damage them any further. And this is the, uh, the natural redirect I had planned. Just gonna get ourselves sorted and go through there. Thread our lines through the route we wanna follow. Like I said, that should be Bring me nicely above Andy there, so we can efficiently carry out the rescue. There are other ways we could have done this. I could have gone the lower branch and then redirected my secondary line, keeping my primary system where it was, and that would have also redirected it. It's whatever's gonna be more efficient and practical at the time. You're constantly going to be having a look for risks. There may be saws running, there may be partially cut branches or hanging branches. So constantly checking for any potential hazards. As we approach, we're going to be assessing his climbing system, trying to evaluate what's going on. Also reassuring the casualty. Andy, can you hear me? Are you conscious? Yeah, I'm 
Excellent, that's a good step. So I've come down pretty much level with him now. So our first step, we want to make contact bridge to bridge. Okay, so I've approached the casualty. First step, bridge to bridge connection. It's going to ensure that the casualty is connected to us in the event of any damaged system while we evaluate what's going on. Andy, are you okay? I am. What's happened, mate? I've had a fall. Once I've done that, if the casualty is conscious and he's able to support himself, we'll leave it at that. Otherwise, we might use a, a lanyard side strop and go around his body to try and keep him in an upright position, more comfortable and easier to control and guide our way down through the system. So I'm just going to leave that there now. So I've got Andy secure. What I'm looking for is to make sure that his system is intact. We've got no damage. I'm happy this is an undamaged system. So we could transfer one side onto the load and take the load off the next. Now we could come down on all four systems. It's a bit uh, congested and a bit awkward control. So we could discard one of his and one of mine and just making it easier to go down. But as Andy's conscious and able to help a bit, are you able to control this for me, Andy? Okay. Help guide down? Yeah. So we're going to go down together in a controlled manner, just steering the casualty and myself through any obstacles. Quietly reassuring the casualty as we go. We've got a bit of rope issues here. Let's just sort that out. Okay, and then we'll continue. Okay, Andy, yeah. all good? Yes. Yeah. We'll get the casualty down on the ground safely where we can administer the appropriate first aid. Okay, so that was a demonstration of our uh, undamaged line rescue. Obviously planning the routes, assessing the risks and hazards, using the, uh, the, the use of natural redirects to access the casualty. Connection bridge to bridge, that's the, the important one. Assessing the damage to the lines coming down in a controlled manner. So now we've completed that one, our next one's gonna be a damage line, which will follow. Okay, so following on from our previous rescue, which was undamaged line, in this scenario, we're gonna perform a rescue which would entail a damaged line. So it's a similar process. We go out, we check our, or select our route. It's gonna be most appropriate and efficient. We get down to the casualty. And as before, we're going to make that first initial contact bridge to bridge. So I'm just going to come in, connect with Andy there, so I've secured him bridge to bridge. Again, if he's unconscious or uncomfortable, range in a way we can just support him by installing our lanyard. our system that's going to bring him round on a bit more of an upright position now we've got him connected bridge to bridge but in order to stop him from falling down when we transfer the load to my system we're going to install a prusik this will be on the static side of the rope Maybe on this one going to form that triangulation to keep him steady. Stress that. Again we're going to click that to his bridge, make sure we're not crossing. Take as much slack as we can out of that and dress the knot. I'm 
Now we're going to slowly transfer the load and his climbing system onto our own. Now that would be enable us now to discard that sys those systems and to come down on my own. In this case, I'm going to leave it on and Andy's going to help guide it over, but otherwise we could discard that and we'll be on these two lines then. So just to summarise, this is a revisional video we use for our students that are undertaking the training here at Pershaw. Um, this rescue, a damaged line, similar in scenario to the undamaged. The only difference was our steps we took to the casualty. So step one, bridge to bridge contact. Step two, we're making the casualty comfortable. And then step three, where we're discarding the, the lines of the casualty, we need to fix with a prussic to our static side, back to the casualty's bridge to get it more upright and comfortable. So I hope that was of some use and you find it informative and don't forget to uh, like, like and subscribe. subscribe.